All right, in this short little video, we're going to talk about a really important um, reaction in acid and base chemistry. This is true for this is this reaction happens in any aqueous solution. It happens in pure water also. It's called the self-ionization or the auto-ionization of water. To understand it, remember that water is an amphoteric substance. That means water is able to act as either an acid or a base. Water can accept hydrogen ions. It can be a base. Water also can donate hydrogen ions. It can be an acid. So if you have pure water, or if you have an aqueous solution where there's lots and lots of water molecules, you can imagine collision theory that those water molecules are constantly bumping into each other. They're constantly colliding with each other. During most of those collisions, nothing happens. They're, they're unsuccessful collisions. But very rarely, in one of those collisions that happens, one water molecule will end up donating a hydrogen ion to another. So there'll be a little tiny acid-base reaction, but it happens very rarely. We'll talk about how we know it happens rarely in just a moment. So we could write the reaction like this. Pause the video if you need to to, to write that balanced equation. So here I'm writing H2O liquid reacts with H2O liquid. If you prefer, you could just say two H2O liquids. And when they collide, they give me a hydronium ion, H3O positive, and a hydroxide ion, OH negative. So one water molecule is behaving as an acid. When it as behaves as an acid, it donates its hydrogen to the other. So the other one becomes a base. And the one that donated hydrogen ends up with hydroxide ion as a conjugate base. The one that accepted the hydrogen ion ends up as a hydronium ion as its conjugate acid. Now, if you think about the equilibrium expression for this reaction, we know that we omit liquids and solids from equilibrium expressions. So this reaction's equilibrium expression is simply KW. We're going to give it a special subscript. So in our, acid, in our equilibrium unit, we just said KC. For acids, we say Ka, but for this self-ionization of water reaction, we're going to say Kw, the W for water. It's going to equal the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide, and that's it, because the reactants are liquids. We, we leave them out of the expression. Now, at 25 degrees Celsius, the temperature where we'll do most of our calculations, the Kw value is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, this is an equilibrium constant. You remember from our equilibrium unit that when the Kc value, in this case a Kw, is small, it means that the reaction makes very little product. Most of the, re most of the reactants are unreacted, so the reaction is reactant favored. So the fact that this is such a tiny number, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, means that this reaction really happens only a tiny, tiny bit. So most water molecules in a beaker of water are not being converted into hydronium hydroxide. There's very little of this. Of course, that explains why water is not a good conductor of electricity, because it has very, very few ions present. You might have thought that there were no ions, but now you understand that in pure water, there's always going to be some hydronium and some hydroxide present. Now, the Kw value, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, means I can write the equation 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 equals the hydronium concentration times the hydroxide concentration. And that's useful when you know one of these concentrations, you can calculate the other. Now, if you've taken pre-calculus math, then you might want to copy down what I'm going to do next. If you haven't taken pre-calculus math, then just watch what I'm going to do and then copy down the final result. If we take the negative logarithm of both sides of this equation, we get the negative logarithm of the Kw equals the negative logarithm of this product, the concentration of hydronium 
times the concentration of hydroxide. Now, the negative logarithm of 1 times 10 to the minus 14, I hope everybody easily recognizes that that's going to give me 14.00. You can verify that, if you like, by just doing it on a calculator. On the right-hand side, you have to understand some logarithms to understand what I'm about to do. There's a rule in logarithms that says the logarithm of a product is the same as the sum of, the, of two logarithms. For example, the logarithm, L-O-G logarithm, of, of uh, 10 times 100 would be the same as the logarithm of 10 plus the logarithm of 100. Just to show you that that's true, 10 times 100 is 1,000, and we know that the log of 1,000 is 3. The logarithm of 10 is a 1, and the logarithm of 100 is a 2. So what we're saying is that 3 equals 1 plus 2. Of course, that's true. So that just illustrates the, the rule that the log of a product equals the sum of the logarithms. So down here, when we have the negative log of this product, we can apply that rule and say that's equal to the negative log of the hydronium concentration plus the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. Now this is looking kind of messy, but if you look at this negative log of hydronium, you recognize what that is. That's pH. And the negative log of hydroxide is pOH. So what we get is this final equation, pH of a solution added to the pOH of the solution will always equal 14.00 at 25 degrees Celsius. And that 14.00 came from the KW. It's actually the pKW, the negative logarithm of the KW value. All right, so there's a, two useful equations that we're going to use a lot in this unit. The first is the KW expression. Hydronium concentration times hydroxide concentration gives me KW, and that number is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees. And finally, if you know the pH, you could add it to the pOH to get 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, now... I'm not sure if we've talked about this before, but pOH, you recall, is very much like pH. It's just the negative logarithm of the hydroxide concentration. Okay, the two are, uh, are analogous. All right, so there's the self-ionization of water, um, allowing you to uh, calculate hydronium concentrations when you know hydroxide or vice versa, and find pHs when you know pOHs or vice versa. Two useful equations in acid-base chemistry.